hello everyone welcome back to another episode of thp tutorials once again i'm your boy seth and this is the chapter four for business policy and strategy now this fourth chapter is about the internal audits the internal audits in chapter three we took a look at what the external audit was all about so we are going to top that with the internal audit so even before we talk about our outline, let's take a look at the comprehensive strategic management model to remind us of what exactly it is that we are doing. Remember, there are three steps in the in strategic management. There is strategy formulation, there is strategy implementation, and then there's what evaluation. We are on the first phase, which is what strategic strategy formulation. So that begins with developing the mission and vision and mission of a business. Then you do your environmental assessment. You look at the strategies in action and then you analyze your strategies, as you can see from the diagram, right? So we've covered this in our video already. That was the chapter two. This was chapter four. Now we are on the internal, which is what? That was chapter three. And this is the internal of the chapter four. So that's what I'm gonna do very well. So at this point, it's appropriate that we talk about our outline, right? In this video, we'll look at first we have an we have an introduction. After that, then our introduction, we we'll talk about the resource-based view of strategy. I spoke a bit about this in chapter three, and then we'll move on to look at the function functional areas of a business, right? That being the department of a business. We won't go so deep into them, but you have to understand that when you are remember we said that internal audit is about what the strength and weakness of a business right so what makes up the business right it, it would it, it would have strong points and weak points so we would break down the business into its functional areas right accounting management information systems and so on and then we'll look at how this functional areas are made up and how we can assess them to determine the weakness and strength of an organization, right? So we look at the functional areas of a business. And then lastly, we look at the FA, which is the what? Internal factor, factors of evaluation matrix, or uh, internal factors evaluation analysis matrix, the FA matrix. And that will essentially, as you talk about in the first, in the previous video, that was chapter three. Now it's the same steps for the EFA, right? That was the external factors evaluation analysis matrix. Good. So as usual, we'll have our intro and then we'll get down to business. Good. Welcome back from the intro. Let's get down to business. So our introduction, right? Let's talk about the internal audit. Now, the process of performing an internal audit. Now, when an internal audit is performed, it requires gathering, assimilating, and prioritizing information about the firm's management, marketing, finance, accounting, production or operations, research, and development. That's R&D and what management information system operations. So as I was saying, if you're going to internally audit a firm, what you need to do is break the firm down, basically. And the firm is made up of what functional areas. So that's what that's what you have here. So you said that you're going to gather information from these functional areas. So you want to gather the information, you want to assimilate them, then you're going to prioritize them. Right. So about the firms, so you see about the firm's management, marketing, finance accounting because these are the functional areas that make up a business so essentially it's simply uh, the internal audits requires gathering assimilating and prioritizing information about the firm or the firm's functional areas right now i said that the internal audit or the ia provides more opportunity for participants to understand how their jobs development departments and divisions fit into the whole firm right good so that's that's something extra 
if you would the effective strategic planning hinges on identification and prioritization of what internal strengths and weaknesses so we have two things we are doing two things are done in internal audit first is what identification and the second is what prioritization of what internal strengths and weaknesses right internal strengths and weaknesses remember when you're doing the internal audit the firm focuses on strengths and weaknesses and when you are doing external audit they focus on what their opportunities and then their threats and also look at the strengths of their competitors and what they are in the weakness of their competitors the process they use to analyze the strength of their competitors the strength and weaknesses of their, of their competitors is similar to the internal audit right but it's from a different perspective because they're looking for they're looking at outside forces or outside firms good so this is the diagram of which i, I was speaking see weaknesses that's the main goal right the strengths cannot be so weaknesses you convert that to your strengths from the strengths you turn it to a, what a distinctive competence and then from there you will move on to having what a competitive advantage now remember that what competitive advantage is what gives the firm an edge over its rivals in the market it is what makes the firm do better than everybody else good now they said that when it comes to the strengths the strengths that cannot be easily matched or imitated by competitors are called distinctive competencies so take note a distinctive competence is not a competitive advantage it's a strength that's hard for your rivals or competitors to imitate or match good so moving on right moving on right the eternal audit requires gathering we've already spoken about this at length right now on the topic of competitive advantage it is essential to talk about the resource based view why this is a model for how a firm can gain and sustain competitive advantage right so now you can talk about the resource based view so it all comes clear now does it not so you realize that when you're talking about the resource based view that's how it's one of the views that talk about how a firm can gain and maintain or sustain their competitive advantage remember that with the so the in the industrial organization view says that what in order for a firm to gain their competitive advantage they need to focus on their external factors their external forces which are affecting them the ones within their control the ones beyond their control that's how they get their competitive advantage by maximizing the opportunities and minimizing their threats however this resource-based view says the opposite it says that for a firm to gain their competitive advantage rather they must look within the organization they must they must identify their strengths and their weaknesses prioritize them and then those weaknesses that have the highest priority should be converted into what into strengths now as and when they convert it into strength they should move on to convert it to what perfect it make it a distinct competence and then from there they will have a competitive advantage so the resource based view let's talk more about it so this is just a reiteration of what i said out the rbv approach contends that internal resources are more important for fm than external factors in achieving and sustaining a competitive advantage now proponents of the resource-based view contend that the organizational performance will primarily be determined by internal resources right internal resources now these resources can be grouped into two so the rbv the resource-based view groups uh, resources of a firm into two there's a tangible and then the intangible now it says that for a resource to be valuable it must be either rare hard to imitate or not easily substitutable so these are the three criteria for a resource to be classified or tagged as what valuable it must be rare it must be hard to imitate and it must be not it, it shouldn't be easily substitutable and right? now these three characteristics are of resources are referred to as what empirical indicators so when you ask what are the empirical indicators of a resource meaning that what are the indicators which say that a resource is valuable one is rare 
is hard to mutate or not easily substitutable. Good. Now, this, this enables FM to implement strategies that improve its efficiency and effectiveness and lead to a sustainable competitive advantage. All right. Good, good. So, see, key internal forces, distinct competencies, a firm strength that cannot be easily. I already spoke about this. Good. Remember that from our outline, where is the outline? Oh, yeah, right. What, what, what's the second one? Functional areas of a business. So, and that's what I'm looking at now. By the way, subscribe. Subscribe. And leave a comment. Moving on, so functional areas of a business. Management. Now, the functional, the, the functions of management consist of four basic activities. There's a planning, organizing, motivating, and then controlling. Let me go back to the slide. Right. So it's just giving general information about this. We've already covered this in our management video, so you can just check out our management playlist. So you know it's if you're a business admin student at this point, you know all this management. It's a functional area in the business. This this these are their functions. This is just a no need to production operations. Now reports. And there's something known as what organizational culture. Also spoke about this in organizational behavior. So you can check out that playlist as well. Organizational behavior. Link will be in the description below. You can check out the entire playlist. Let us know what you think. See now here it's about integrating strategy and culture. Organizational culture significantly affects planning activities. If strategies can capitalize on cultural strengths such as strong work ethic or highly ethical beliefs, then management often can swiftly and easily implement changes. Are you, are you following? So this is pointing out to the fact that organizational culture plays a huge role in your, or, it, or rather it should play a huge role in your strategy. For your, if, if you want your strategy to, be, to, to succeed, if you want to achieve your long-term goals, then your organizational culture must be intertwined, right? It, it must be embedded in your strategy. If not, your chances of making it out not too good. So yeah, he's talking about what organizational culture is. OC, if you remember. Now, organizational culture is a pattern of behavior that has been developed by an organization as it learns to cope with its problem of external adaptation and internal integration and that has worked well enough to be considered valid and to be taught to new members as a correct way to perceive think and feel so first this is let's let's take a few moments to break it down organizational culture what is it organizational culture it says what it's a pattern of behavior that has been developed by an organization so first it's out oc is developed by an organization it's a pattern of behavior which is developed by an organization right and this behavior is developed by the organization as it learns to cope with its problem of external adaptation and internal integration so as it's trying to adapt to the environment and also as it's trying to be in unison or be more synergetic or be, increase its synergy no, no, if, if, if synergetic is a word, but you get what I'm trying to say, right? So as it's trying to adapt to its environment and increase its synergy, you know, that pattern of behavior that it used to cope through that process, that's what we call organizational culture. And instead of what? It is the way that you, as and when new members come into the organization, see, this is a pattern of behavior. It's something that the organization has learned to do over time. That's how they survive. So that is how newcomers are taught to perceive, think, and feel. So long story short, organizational culture should move hand in hand with your strategy. If not, I'm not going to feel. If your strategy tries to change pre-established patterns of behavior, you, you, it will be very difficult to change. It's like asking your, your, your people to change who they are. Shouldn't be the case. Right, so as and when management is being audited, this is a checklist of questions. Of questions. So 
that the firm used strategic management concepts. Uh, the company objectives and goals measurable and well communicated. Do managers at all hierarchical levels plan effectively? Do the managers delegate authority well? Is the organization structure appropriate? So you see, we yeah, are yeah, auditing the management, the functional area which is management, to see to see whether or not so this is management. How strong is our management? You no, know, what what are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? I are you getting where I'm going? Moving on, these are more questions. Marketing, basic activities in marketing, for marketing research, so at placing or distributing product. Once again, this is not anything that you have to rack your brain over. Product planning, promotion, distribution, not what the cost is about, right? So this is the more important aspect, the audit checklist. Send out, are the market, right? Are the market segmented effectively? Is the organization positioned well among competitors? Are present channels of distribution reliable and cost effective? Is the firm conducting and using market research effectively? So these are some of the questions that a firm must ask, right? When they are auditing their marketing department, like that, that functional area or unit known as marketing, when they are auditing it, these are the questions that they have to ask in order to determine the strengths and then the weaknesses. Th these are more questions. Next, finance or accounting functions. There are three functions of finance or accounting. Investment decision, financing decision, or dividend decision. More information, more information on those things. How do we audit that functional area? How has each ratio changed over time? How does each ratio compare to industry norms? How does each ratio compare with key competitors, right? Now, these ratios are talking about financial ratios. So you have, I think there's a diagram here. Let me not talk too much. So you see, anyway, these are ratios which are used to interpret and analyze financial statements for an organization. So you have liquidity ratios, leverage ratios, activity ratios, profitability ratios, growth ratios. This is not accounting or financial reporting. So I'm just brushing through it. Right. But you can you can apply this elsewhere. So you can pause and appreciate it. Maybe you're also doing accounting, you know, in this semester. Or sometime you can use this as a point of reference. It has all the formulas here written down for you. Good to go. Anyway, how do we audit the finance or accounting? Department. These are some of the questions that you can ask, right? Where is the firm financially strong and weak as indicated by the financial ratio analysis, right? Strengths and weaknesses. Can the firm raise needed short term capital? Can they, you know, if we have to get money to meet an obligation in, let's say, three months, is it possible? Do you have that strength? This is what we're talking about. Now, can the firm raise needed long term capital through debt or equity? Does the firm have sufficient working capital? A capital, a capital budgeting procedures effective, right? So if you can try your best. Again, I always find that this analogy is effective. The kid, the African kid in the African classroom, everybody wants to be first. Can everybody do the work? So maybe this finance, finance or accounting aspect could be: Can that child who is doing so well pay school fees? Can they maintain their place? The person who wants to. Be the best. Are, are they paying their school fees? Are they getting enough money? You see, this is how you analyze stuff. You so you audit that department to find out whether they are financially, if their finances are good, weak, or strong. If they are account, you no, know, uh, is there any accountability? Are they accounting for the things? Well, do you know whether or not they are losing money? Stuff like that. So these are more questions. MIS, Management Information Systems. I have a whole playlist on that. If you are doing management information systems, you ought to check it out on the channel. You know, it's, it, it, it's been compiled in a playlist. You, you you can go crazy with it. All right. So business analytics. Now a business technique that involves using soft this falls under MIS. Business analyst analytics. It falls under MIS. Right. The internal factors evaluation matrix. So this is our this is the last 
item on our outline just pointing that out also subscribe subscribe good so right let's go for a break then we come Right, so the if it, as I said, it's the same as the FE, right? So it says what list key internal factors as identified in the internal audit process. Assign a weight that ranges from the same thing that I spoke about. Again, how to gain it? We've seen this a lot. Don't freak out. So, once again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment in the video. If this video is helpful, kindly share so that others may benefit. Also, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.